Hey everybody, this is the lecture on pattern in art and design. This image here is an example of an aperiodic tiling based on Sir Roger Penrose's formula of an aperiodic tile patterns, which he created. He's a scientist, and you can find out more about him by following these links here. Pattern in art history. We see numerous examples of the use of pattern designs in both fine, decorative, and commercial arts throughout history in all cultures. It adds a decorative element to many functional and non-functional designs. It also adds a feeling of rhythm and movement. Patterns can be irregular or regular and be found in both nature and art. There are many applications for pattern in the sciences, medicine, and the arts. Pattern is related to the visual element of texture which also has irregular or regular repetitions. But it is an intentional creation which creates a specific design in the case of the man-made created patterns. Some examples of use of pattern in various cultures and arts as well as in nature follow on the next slides. Pattern in different cultures. This Asante Kente cloth from Ghana, West Africa creates a rhythmic, repeated design by weaving different color fibers of cotton and silk together. Kente designs and weavings were said, according to legend, to have been created by two young men who were taught to weave by a spider whose web they admired. Kente cloth were used for special purposes by royalty and often used symbolism. They are still associated with high status, and you can follow this link to find out more about the kente designs. Pattern in Persian rug designs. The London Ardabil carpet is one of the oldest Persian hand-knotted rugs. It is a Tabriz design with a medallion at the center, which represented Persian gardens and paradise. It also included calligraphic elements. The original design was created in 1539 to 1540. It was created with silk and wool with 3 to 350 knots per square inch. Similar patterns can also be seen in Persian architecture and mosaics and tiling. Its purpose was both decorative and spiritual, and you can follow this link to read more about this carpet. Pattern in Sculpture and Architecture Vang stone is a Viking carved and painted rune stone grave memorial created in 1000 in Norway. It has an irregular pattern with some regular elements which are similar to the Celtic pattern with a stylized war and ribbon and knot and leaf patterns. The memorial inscription reads, Gassi's sons raised this stone in the memory of Gunnar their nephew. And you can see here I have an image of the actual stone which would be carved and painted and then a drawing of the design with the runic inscription over to the right. Pattern in art and nature. Pattern is a repeated repetition of a motif or forms which creates a feeling of interest, movement, and rhythm. There are many applications for use of pattern in both fine art and in commercial art. Textile designs and other pattern surface designs can be applied in many ways, including drawing, painting, batik, printing, weaving, and hand knotting. Pattern is found in nature and in many decorative arts and in fine art. Pattern in nature can be regular or irregular, symmetrical or asymmetrical. Many fine artists use pattern in their work. It can create a feeling of order, peace, and harmony as well as rhythm, movement, and texture. Many fine artists who use pattern in their work create a meditative aspect in their work. Texture is related to pattern because it is a repetition of forms which create a texture. Pattern is a more ordered intentional design, whether it is found in nature or created by people. Many cultures have a varied and beautiful use of pattern in both decorative and fine arts. What is pattern? Pattern is a controlled repetition of a motif or motifs. It has been used for centuries in fine and commercial arts as well as textile arts and crafts. It can create a feeling of texture, rhythm, and movement. It can be a regular pattern where the motif is repeated in a set way, such as this rhythmic square maze 
and circle design and the co colorful quilt design. Irregular pattern. Doves in the Sky, Polynesia, 1946. Two cut paper collage designs created by 19th century figurative artist and faux artist Henri Matisse have what we call an irregular pattern. The pattern of the birds and plant motifs are superimposed over a regular repeated grid pattern. There was also a radial pattern created in the first collage with the birds. The second panel forms a more freeform pattern with less birds. Irregular patterns are formed in a random fashion and usually do not have visible repeats. Both regular and irregular patterns can be found in nature as well as in art. Matisse and pattern in art. Now Matisse used pattern a lot in his cut paper collages, which he did at the end of his life, but he also used it in a lot of his paintings. You can take a look at some of them. We would have beautiful um, pieces of cloth and other elements that had patterns and designs with uh, textile-like patterns in them. Large decoration with masks created in 1953, another of Matisse's cut paper collage designs, has a symmetrical repeated pattern. He painted paper with gouache paint and then cut and pasted the shapes to create these beautiful works toward the end of his career. Hopper, repetition and visual rhythm. Repetition of motifs in a work of art can create a feeling of visual rhythm similar to the rhythm in a musical piece. In Hopper's painting of a street scene early Sunday morning in 1930, we see repeated rectangles of different sizes which move our eyes around the composition and create visual rhythm. You also see repetition of color. You've got the complements with the red and green. And this would be an example of an irregular pattern. Pattern in fine art. Warhol's 20 Marilyns is an example of a direct repeat pattern in fine art. While Jasper John's Numbers is an example of all over pattern with varying repeated motifs, shapes, and colors. Both works use all over pattern where we see no assigned main focal point. So in other words, you have repetition of the numbers, the colors, the rectilinear forms in Warhol's piece, you have the repetition of the photograph of Marilyn Monroe, repetition of colors and such, um, but you don't feel like you're gonna zoom in on any one area. So the, these would be, the, the Warhol would be a regular repeat, repeat and the Jasper Johns painting would be, it, it looks very regular, but it's actually not set in a regular repeat with the use of the numbers and the colors. Pattern and order. Pattern is a powerful tool which has been used throughout history in fine and decorative arts in all sorts of applications. It can create a sense of stability and interest in a design as well as a meditative effect. Both ancient and contemporary artists have used pattern in their work for different purposes and effects. It is also a part of our daily lives. Many applications of pattern can be found in nature and in sciences such as mathematics. Here are some examples in this image over to the left of natural patterns. Pattern in nature. Irregular patterns such as these fissure patterns are commonly found in nature. Regular patterns such as the circular symmetry of an orange are also abundant. The sizes of the segments of the orange create some irregularity in the design pattern. Project pattern design. For this project, you will be creating your own pattern design for textiles or some other application. Your design can be representational, abstract, or non-objective, and it can be created with any media, including digitally. You can use any patterns in art history as inspiration or create your own design. All work must be original and not copies of other works. Please see the specific instructions in the assignment and the following slides with examples of student and other works. You will be creating one design in black and white and one in color using one of the color harmonies we studied. Create a pattern. A single motif can be repeated into a larger pattern. You can follow the instructions in the assignment for various patterns or create your own using a smaller motif in a 2x2 two two inch box or repeating a larger design in a 4x4 four four inch box. 
the pattern will be set in, in an 8 by 8 inch grid. And you can see here we have this smaller motif up at the top left, and they show two different examples of how it was repeated to create a pattern. Pattern repetitions. These images have some ideas for how to rotate your smaller design if you choose to do that to create your pattern. Use graph paper. The first thing you should do is make your 8 by 8 inch grid and make some smaller 2 by 2 inch boxes and make some designs in them. And then you can map them out in the 4 by 4 inch box to see what's going to happen with that. I used graph paper to try out some ideas for the pattern designs. I did my designs in color, but you can start out in black and white first and then try color later. You can create a design rotating a smaller motif, as I mentioned before, or you can make a larger design in the 4 by 4 inch box. Either way, you will repeat the 4 by 4 inch box four times in your 8 by 8 inch grid. And you can see over to the right, I have four larger designs that I created in the 4 by 4 inch box, um, and those would just be repeated. Same thing for the top um, on the left, the two top designs and the lower right design. The only one that would have a rotation maybe of images would be the one with the, the holiday designs. Even that one, you could rotate it or you could leave it the way it is in the same orientation. Use the trace transfer method. Once you create your design on the graph paper, you can then trace the 4 by 4 inch design to transfer it to drawing paper. First, transfer the outline of the larger grid, which is 8 by 8 inches. If you need the smaller squares for your design, you can transfer them too, and you can see that I've done that here. So in other words, if you had like a checkerboard design where you wanted to have the smaller 2 by inch, 2 by 2 inch boxes showing, you would probably want to have the grid structure there to help you and you can erase the pencil lines later. Pattern in textile design. In textile designs, there are two types of designs. In a straight repeat seen here, we see an obvious repeat of a motif in a regular format, as seen in my design for a tie of Eiffel Towers. Notice that when the design is tilted, the Eiffel Tower motif is no longer seen as the positive form. The background shape starts to dominate. Depending on the values, colors, and brilliance used in your design, the figure ground relationships can change and your pattern may change also. Rotated design changes the pattern. So you can see, as I mentioned before, if I rotate this design to the landscape mode, the negative forms, which are in white in the background, become more dominant. You can kind of see it a little bit in the other vertical format too, but it's much stronger in here. It all depends on the relative values and the, the colors. You should also do little color swatches of which colors you used in your design. And if it's a specific color harmony, you should write that down as well. Croquis design. The second type of design seen in textile and craft designs is called a croquis design. This means there is no repeat in the design and it must be set into a repeat to create a pattern, which can be applied to textile or paper, etc. This cat design that I did has an irregular pattern, but it needs to be set into a repeat, either by cutting it in half or into three parts and rearranging them in order to create a repeated pattern. So a lot of textile designs, you might just have a croquis design and then they're set into repeat. They're all, all usually done as gouache paintings, which these last two works I showed you are, and then they would be, the repeat part of it would be done on computers now. Wallpaper half drop pattern. Another popular pattern in wallpaper and other paper and textile designs is called the half drop, where the motif drops down and then moves back up. The next few slides have some examples of student work. You can see this design of the eyes. The smaller two by two inch box was rotated in different directions in order to create the four point turning square pinwheel design. In this lovely bird design, which was done with color pencil, you can see that they've done the design in the larger 4x4 four four inch box, and then they've repeated that four times in the larger grid. It uses an analogous cool tone harmony with the blue and green with a warm accent of yellow. In this lovely scroll design, you can see, again, they've used a four-point turning square with the smaller 2x2 two two inch box, which is rotated, and then it was repeated four times. It looks very beautiful, both in the grayscale and the color version with the yellow and the brown. 
in this koi fish design, they started out with the larger 4x4 four four inch box, and then they've used an alternation diagonal between the values in the grayscale, and also the same with the color. This elephant design is such a cute design. It works really well in both the grayscale with the drawing effect and then in color with the analogous blue and green. And you can see that they simply rotated um, the design of the elephants. In these two designs you have again use of the four point turning square. And you have what that means is the two by two inch box is rotated in four different directions within the four by four inch box. On the design on the left, you have the really cute hearts in purple. And then the design on the right, which was done with watercolor pencils, you have the effect of both drawing and painting with a monochromatic design in blue. This gorgeous design of dragonflies has such a beautiful contrast between the cooler tone colors and the complement background of yellow against the violet. I could actually see this being turned into an item of jewelry if you were just to take one of the 4.4 designs, which has been repeated again four times in the larger grid. This design, which was done digitally, always reminds me of wrapping paper. And in the digital design, you're going to have a very even um, distribution of your color. Everything will look very perfect and regular, which is something you want to strive for in a pattern, even if it's done by hand. This dog tag design is really a beautiful design. You have the feeling of one pattern superimposed over another one, especially in the color version where you have the dog tags are a little bit darker and they look like they're floating with the stars above the design in green, the camouflage design. Now, this student used text and um, calligraphy similar to what you see in some graffiti designs and other designs. And you can see they rotated, you can see their smaller two by two inch square and that was rotated. And then both the color and the um, drawing version in grayscale are very beautiful, very soft use of a complement with blue and orange in the color version. You can see here more four point turning square designs. One of them was done, I think this was a sketch done on the graph paper with the beautiful flower pattern. Looks like it could be used for stained glass. We have the design over to the right in black and green, very beautiful southwest feeling, and the one below also has a very um, beautiful use of color with those bright intense colors on the darker background and then the cute little tea or coffee cups which are rotated again. And here we see use of the text again which is rotated in very subtle calming colors in a warm tone analogous and you have these blue sort of tie-dye type designs which were done with color pencil the design up to the top. I don't have the color version, but that was done in purple, and it always reminds me of drip painting or tie-dye, and then the cute little heart design at the bottom right. So this concludes the lecture. Feel free to try other media if you want to use glitter pens or have little items that you stick on as, as long as it follows in a regular pattern. You'll be good, and have fun with this. Take care.